Hi, this is Peter Godinas, your host of Your Pivot Journey. Today we continue our conversation with Jan Johnson, who is a very active advocate of the sport of pole vaulting. In Jan's interview, he takes the sport of pole vaulting, pivoting from a dangerous sport to a safe sport. We hope you enjoyed this interview. Please subscribe, comment, and like on the links below. So Jan, tell us about your 20 years of pole vaulting research. It all started uh, for me in 1995. That was the first year. Uh, Eddie Cease, my friend Eddie Cease would come and help me at camp. And uh, he knew about this thing called ASTM, the American Society for Testing and Materials. And Eddie pointed out to me that they had written a specification, many rules, not all rules, but some rules are developed through ASTMs. A bunch of people get together in the room, it's a lot of politics, and they have a vote and the ASTM publishes uh, a document about something. And there are probably 50,000 different uh, ASTMs for different things. Uh, what's in the pavement in your street, what's in drywall. Um, it just goes on and on and on and on what they do. They're a darn good organization. But the National High School Federation and the NCAA and the IAAF had all based their rule on the 1986 ASTM, which made the pits too small. The pit only needed to be 13 feet behind the zero line. It only needed to be, I think it was 16 feet wide. And you could see the data over the next 10 years, how people were missing the pit off the back, missing the pit off the side. We had a lot of bad accidents. So Eddie invited me to join ASTM and uh, he became the chairman, uh, the new chairman and we fixed the pit and we uh, we made it bigger and we padded the standard bases uh, where a lot of accidents happened and uh, we redesigned the angles uh, of the padding around the box it used to be the padding was just square straight up and down but we tapered it so the pole could bend uninterrupted so it's a bend cavity i guess so um, then I met another guy uh, who was a really good friend of mine and, um, uh, named Dr. Barry Bowden, and he loves to do research. He's a, he's a physician out in Maryland, and uh, he suggested that uh, I should go to all my camps I'd run, and in those days I was seeing five, six hundred kids every summer uh, at camps and we did questionnaires and asked them about the type of accidents they had and the type of coaching and, and the polls they had and all that type of stuff. So we just, we just generated, uh, databases of information and wrote basically four major articles over the next 20 years about pole vaulting safety. So that's how I got started. Uh, I'd done teaching for a long time, right? I, I mean, I first started helping kids pole vault in 1970 at KU we had high school kids come and practice with us at the University of Alabama we had the local high school kids come. We, I, I was learning uh, how to coach and I was a physical education major emphasized emphasis in biomechanics and uh, it just really suited me perfect for what my career goal ended up being and what I've done that's what I do pretty fun here Here's, here's uh, last summer's, uh, this is last summer's uh, data that we collected uh, from the kids that came to Pope. I, I, when I ask them questions, I want to ask them in person. I want them to write it down on paper so that it's clear what we're looking for uh, on the questions. Uh, so that's what we've done. It's been a heck of a lot of work, actually. It just makes sense that somebody needs to make the sport safer you know they call us the most dangerous sport um and that's for good reason um there's just a lot of risk involved so we're really about reducing risk that's what it's about 
Jan, tell us some of the accidents that you've actually witnessed with your own eyes. Oh, my goodness. Uh, when I was a junior in high school, um, at my high school, at Bloom High School in Chicago Heights, uh, we, had a, we had a trailer that had foam rubber in it uh, with wheels on each side. No front buns, right? No, no padding coming out on the sides of the box or anything like that. And I saw a guy land straight on the edge of this plywood sidewall on the box that held the foam in place and got hurt bad. That was the first real bad accident I ever saw. The one I think that, that changed me the most, however, was watching my new teammate, Wayne Hicks, in Monroe, Louisiana, go straight up and come straight down and land straight in the box. Separated his shoulder, broke his leg, severe head injury in the hospital in Monroe for two months, uh, reducing the swelling on his brain and all that type of stuff. I was catching his, I was catching his pole. I was standing 10 feet away and watched it and heard it. And uh, it's forever affected me. Kids come up short all the time and the lucky ones can get their feet back under them and they land on their feet in the box area. Uh, and, the un and the unlucky ones don't because there's a point in pole vaulting where when you've inverted and gotten upside down to a certain point, there's no turning back. You're going to go up and have to turn over and, and land on your back or whatever in the pit. So th those two in particular. I've seen several others, though, too. Uh, oh, my gosh. At Cal Poly in about 1985 or 6, uh, at Cal Poly, we used to put – a couple of extra pit sections behind the back of the pit because we felt like the pit was too short. And uh, we're at camp. It's like a summer of 86. And we had pulled the back pit sections out of there just to slide the pit up. And at that moment, a kid came down the runway and jumped over the back of the pit. And he was five feet in front of me. I, I saw him land in a sitting position on the back of the pit, pit and flip backwards off the back of the pit and hit his head on the concrete underlayment under the pit. It was horrible. Bleeding out of his ear. He was in huge pain. The ambulance had to come. He was in the hospital in, in San Luis Obispo for three, four weeks before he went home. And um, I don't know. I don't know if Paul Brower ever pulled all it again or not. It was horrible. So, Jan, that was really a great explanation of some of the actions you've seen. Uh, we have a short little clip that you provided that I'd like to play for our our yeah. audience, and maybe you talk through it. Here's a guy that looks like he's a really good pole baller, uh, but for whatever the reason is, on that jump, he comes up short lands on his back in the box. And here's another guy doing exactly the same thing, uh, very similar to Wayne Hicks. You know, this kid caught a little bit of the pit, but it just shows you, here's a girl whose tip catches on the front lip of the pit, one of the worst accidents you can have. Looks like she lands basically flat on her back in the box. Not good. Here's a hand slip off. Uh, you, obviously, in a hand slip off or a broken pole, you're spinning backwards, and uh, you're not going to get in the pit very deep. And uh, th those are probably the three most common mechanisms for injury in the sport right now. We've made the pit big enough. we padded the standards. Um, the front buns certainly come plenty far enough out. Uh, we still have a problem of kids landing in the box and getting hurt. It's really the last, it's really the last frontier. It's the last thing that we need to fix. So it's only been 20 years we've worked on some of this. <laughs> it's a show the world uh, that here at this pole vault club and at 30 or 40 other places around America, we've installed cushioned boxes with a lower front lip and a little bigger bend cavity, uh, and, uh, and, and a cushioned area around the box that cushions all the upper facing edges of the box. And um, that, that, that's really the next step here. There's no reason to have boxes the way they are. The way to pull vault, the reason the way the pull vault boxes are the way they are today 
is because when they pour a runway of concrete or asphalt, this is before they put the rubber surface on top, uh, they just sink the box into concrete. And that makes for a very, very, very hard box. So that's what we're trying to do is, is soften that up. Jan, so what part of the plant box structure can be even can be softened and can it be softened anymore? Hey, Pete, you know, based on your question about what parts can be cushioned, uh, these two pictures here in table one that you're looking at right now really tell a story. Uh, on the right, uh, we're seeing, we're showing that the plant box, as we have it now, um, plate steel set in concrete is about 10,000 ick. Ick is the acronym for head injury criteria. 10,000 ick is three times higher than the level of head injury criteria that causes death in head injury. It's three times higher than that. Uh, it, it, and, and we're not even talking about the anvil, the anvil effect of the rails around the box. The, the boxes are so dangerous because they're just plate steel with hard edges on them. We need to get rid of all of that to make it safer. The picture, the diagram on the left uh, shows that we can, we can, we can easily lower the the impact attenuation to 800 HIC, between 800 and 1200 HIC, I'd say it could be. So we're taking it from 12, from, from 10,000 down to approximately 800 by doing what I'm suggesting. And all those dark gray area, all those areas, those are all areas that can be cushioned. So would you like to have cushioning on top of the most dangerous place in sports? which is basically the top of the end plate of the plant box. If you land on that, it's uh, really, really dangerous. So um, that's, that's, I think, the areas that we can cushion and make it a lot better. Those are the areas that we're cushioning in, at my pole vault club here in the backyard and where I've installed these boxes um, all over the country. See that chart? That chart explains everything. If we're just looking at the line on the far right hand side uh, that tells you your probability of injuries based on how hard the impact is. So as you can see uh, at the bottom there between 1,000 and 1,500 HIC uh, there's only a 20 percent uh, chance of, of injury and then when you get up to um, when you get up to about 2,500, 3,000 HIC, which is at the top of that, you've got an 80 to 100% chance of fatal injury. You see that, how that works? Uh, 1,500 HIC is where, the, uh, where the, the serious injuries tend to begin. So that's some of the research uh, that we did when we were looking for components in parts to improve the cushioning in a plant box. And the solution it ended up was so simple. We're already using, we're already using these materials. Uh, they're very commonly available all over the country. So that's what we did. It took 10 years. Crazy, huh? Jan, that was a really a good interview that was very informative. And uh, I think we should, in the next session, talk about the implementation of what this actually looks like and in, um, in putting one of these together. Would you, in the next session, explain how that's done? I think that's a great idea. I think that's exactly what we should do, you know? I mean, really, what we just talked about is pretty simple. Uh, would you rather, if you were going to, if you were going to uh, jump off the side of my barn and back from... 10 feet, would you rather land on something soft or something incredibly hard with incredibly hard edges on it? That's what this, that's what this interview has been about. Um, so that, that's what we're trying to do is make that better. Well, we're looking forward to seeing that, Jan, but thank you so much uh, yep. for giving us this time and making the sport of pole vaulting going from a dangerous sport and pivoting into a very safe sport. It's only taken, what, 20 years. <laughs>
Well, hopefully we maybe we can get this done this year. Yeah. So with that, Jam, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. And thank you so much. And looking forward to the next time. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Well, we hope you enjoyed that interview with Jan Johnson. If you'd like to get an ebook on Jan Johnson's and Dr. Barry Bowden's information on pole vault landing and injury, please click on the link below. And, oh, by the way, subscribe and you'll be receiving notification on other great interviews by Jan Johnson on the subject of pole vaulting.